So I know the last time that I featured this bike, I made the promise that we were going to experiment, we were going to try, we were going to do a spray dot bike repaint of this thing, but I'm actually gonna backpedal on that a little bit for a couple of reasons. As everyone was asking in the comments, what is the source for getting spray dot bike to Canada? There isn't really one. The cons of cost completely overweigh any sort of pro as to what spray dot bike is actually like to work with. What I thought about doing instead was just going and buying like your typical trim clad stuff like I use on the wall here just in a spray can, doing a fun paint job that way. I didn't feel I didn't feel like that was an appropriate direction to go anymore. Not to mention, everybody continues to ride. The bike has been out of commission since my crash, but my shoulder's feeling a lot better. And the antsiness is taking over, along with there's parts here that need to go on. There's parts that I need to get ready for that are actually probably going to show up while shooting this video. And I want to ride it. I want to ride it before the season's over because snow will be here soon. And I want to get the next two-ish months of riding in on this thing. So in the meantime, while I was getting ready for this, I did press all of the bearings back in yesterday. It feels significantly smoother and better pretty well all around. As you can see, the shock is still out of it. I fought with trying to take the air can off of the shock literally all day yesterday. So early this morning, I went and got a little bit of help getting that separated apart. And now that is what we're into. So as you know, from the last video that we made with this bike, I had another option of a shock. Um, and as I was messing with it, it didn't really fit all that great. It was also a shorter stroke than what this is. So it was really gonna mess with the geometry and the travel of the bike. And I'm not really sad to mess with geometry because you can always get used to that. But the fact that I was gonna lose kind of a an unknown but like sort of estimated amount of travel didn't quite set right and curiosity and wanting to know how to service a shock kind of got the best of me i found myself pulling this rock shock monarch apart just to make sure that i have a good idea of how to service and take care of all of my full suspension parts in the future when we get more of them so air can off you can see that there's a bunch of gunk and grossness built up over seven years of using this thing and not doing any servicing or opening it up. So I'm thinking, along with Jeff from Bike Monkey, who does a lot of this, that if we just kind of give it a, a quick cleaning, servicing, new grease, a little bit of oil will go in there, solve our leaking air problem, we'll have a proper working shock again. And kind of the way I see it is that if it fails and it doesn't work, at least I had the opportunity to pull an already broken, not working shock apart, get an idea of how all the internal workings are so that I can deal things in the future. Not to mention I didn't buy a rebuild kit because I don't think it's necessary, but it's something that I'd try next. If I'm honest, this just kind of reminds me of like cleaning the carburetor. Whether or not this cleaning, fresh grease, and fresh oil in here truly does make a difference and possibly solves our air leak problem, I still think it was a fun experiment. I'm glad I did it uh, because these were foreign to me. They're not so much anymore. The real bonus would be that it like actually works. All right, next up, as you can tell from the cable that I've already run, is finally doing this bike some justice and putting on the dropper post that I ordered about two weeks to like a month ago. Now when I ordered my dropper post, I actually had to do quite a bit of math because this stupid frame has this like whoop, whoop, only have so much room to actually insert a post. So I couldn't go with like a 180 mil travel dropper post because it would need to insert more than what I could with the way this frame is designed. So I ended up having to go with a very specific seat post 
And that is from 1UP. And as you can see here, in these calculations, I was looking at the 150 and the 180 mil travel. But the maximum insert for this frame is about 178 millimeters. And then when you take away room for the actual actuator, you've got about 163 millimeters of room to put a post in. So I measured how high my seat would be when I want to be pedaling, and that gave me about 260 millimeters of exposed seat post. So by looking at the length of each of the different options, I minus 160, which was the amount that I could actually put into the frame and came out with what I would have for exposed seat post for maximum insertion. With the 150, I'd have 245, which gave me 15 mils extra of seat post to get up to my 260. And with the 180, I would have 305 millimeters exposed, which means it couldn't go any lower and it would be 40 millimeters too high, about 40 millimeters too high. All that to say, I was forced to go with the 150 mil. And then more importantly, based on my research, the 1UP's components is the one that has the least amount of seat posts that must be inserted into the bike for the amount of drop that you get. So if I went with any other brand, I would have had to get a lesser travel dropper. I have a one-up dropper on the Schwinn. I really like it. I'd recommend it pretty much to anyone. Now, finally, the last thing that is to be done is just to get the drivetrain and handlebar ready for what is currently, if my text messages of tracked shipments is to be believed, the new drivetrain shifter cassette derailleur that's going to go on this thing provided by MicroShift. But in the meantime, it's impossible to not want to at least see if the things we've put on and changed didn't make at least some sort of difference. Now, for those of you wondering, yes, I do have it set up as the 26750B setup mullet, like a mini, mini mullet setup. I think just for simplicity's sake, that this will probably be the way that I ride the bike. Not because I didn't like the height of the bottom bracket or the way the bike handled width the 650B wheel on the rear. Okay, fingers crossed on a package being at the front door very shortly. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's here. Just go out for a run and then come back and it's it's on the front doorstep, it's here. Microshift, this showed up, this showed up quick. You guys don't mess around. Advent nine speed with a clutch. Not Advent X. 9 speed 11 through to 46. Advent 9 speed shifter. As you all know, Advent X is sold out across the globe. But there was a time earlier in this channel that Advent 9 with a clutch came out and I wanted to use it. As a matter of fact, I bought an Advent 9 speed rear derailleur at one point hoping to use it with an 8-speed Sora shifter. That did not work, but my want for trying this group set has never wavered. And Patrick at MicroShift, not wanting to leave the channel hanging, wanting to be a part of this build, offered the Advent 9 in the place of Advent X to get the ball rolling a little quicker. And I jumped at that opportunity. Okay, even though I'm still all sweaty and just finishing a run, I'm putting this all on. Shifts really, really good.
there it is. This is going to be the completed bike for the next little bit. The dropper post was kind of the last fairly rich purchase I got to make when I had a full-time job. Considering YouTube is now the career path, I think it's probably best that we keep the spending to a minimum, especially considering I've been looking at steel full suspension bikes, and those can range anywhere from like, you know, $2,000 to eight, 8,000, just for the frame set. I always need to keep in mind that I haven't been riding mountain bikes very often, and I probably don't need to buy an $8,000 frame. Not that I can, but I probably don't need to either. There's just one last thing we need to do to this before we're done.